Thank you for the kind presentation, and uh, I would like to congratulate for this wonderful session. I've learned a lot from the previous speakers. Some of you are my previous mentors and friends, and it's very nice to see you, you um, up here. So my uh, talk would be a little bit different than my uh, previous uh, presenter because I was asked to show and to share with you my experience as an HPB and transplant surgeons and endoscopy in, in Canada. Don't have any, anything to disclose. And uh, the objective of my presentation would be to, first of all, to identify what quality of care means and then uh, what the Canadian healthcare system works in uh, contrast to what we are used in the United States and also what is a typical HPV practice in one of the academic Canadian uh, programs. So there is no universal definition of what quality of care is. But we can summarize saying that we should basically be able to provide the right treatment or ask for the right test to the right patient at the right time and with the right resources. And resources is very important for HPB because HPB and transplantation are probably the two disciplines that requires most of the resources in a healthcare system. To better understand what I'm trying to share with you is to um, bring you to, to understand the healthcare system in Canada in contrast to the United States where you have uh, private providers who are supporting the expenses that are required for the healthcare. In, uh, in Canada, <clears throat> in 1984, the Canadian Healthcare Act was approved, and that means uh, that every Canadian is able to access healthcare without facing the out-of-pocket expenses. However, not many know that there is a definition of uh, what is healthcare and how the healthcare is provided. So each province in Canada is um, responsible to provide the resources necessary to take care of their constituents. And that means uh, that in uh, a big country as Canada, you have to face different <clears throat> geographical conditions and also um, ed education conditions and socioeconomic and demographic that creates a little bit of differences and discrepancies about healthcare um, uh, support that is available for Canadians living in different provinces. This is a very uh, simple graphic showing you the Canadian geography, but above all, that there is a significant heterogeneity of resources available. As you can see in uh, Atlantic Canada, where I work for 11 years before moving to the United States, there are four provinces, Nova Scotia, Princess Edward Island, Newfoundland and Labrador, and, and then uh, New Brunswick. The average income for a family is almost half of the income that is supposed to be, uh, in average, uh, supporting a family living in Alberta or in British Columbia, which are much more richer in natural resources and they have a stronger economy. In addition, in uh, Atlantic Canada, there is a significant increase in people who left the Atlantic Canadian system because of the economic factors, and they worked for many decades in other parts of Canada. But then they want to come back in Atlantic Canada because it's such a wonderful place to have a family and to retire. This is a typical community in Atlantic Canada. You can see it's a wonderful place where you can have a lot of activities, outdoor activities, but it's also a very good place where you can raise a family. Education is uh, free because it's uh, supported by the government and the quality of life is one of the highest in, uh, in uh, developed countries. However, the fact that the provincial budget is capped creates a lot of challenges, especially for individuals who want to create a little bit of more advanced, you know, use more advanced technologies or increment uh, the volume of uh, HPB and transplantation. 
There are therefore less resources for instrumentation such as a CT scan and MRI. There is a surgical equipment which is not the most uh, advanced because for example when I was there we didn't have a robot despite the fact that we were the only transplant HPB center serving a population of four million individuals. Information technology was not common, so we had to write our own orders, which is very uncommon for someone working and practicing in the United States. And also you have to show that there is a cost effectiveness for everything you do. So in other words, even if you want to try a new technology or if you want to try a new medication for oncology, for example, you have to prove at the provincial level that this intervention is cost effective, which is very uncommon for someone who has not been practicing in, a, in such environment. And overall, the fact that it's a, a capped uh, uh, system allows you to have a very minimal margins to improve, for example, the comfort for the arrangements for patients and for their families when they are in the hospital. Other challenges of working in that community is that many patients are coming from rural communities as expressed by the previous um, uh, uh, speaker, and therefore people have to travel for several hours to come to the transplant centers or to the HPV centers, especially during the winter time. And especially if you live on, in Newfoundland, which is an island, or on PI, which is another island where you have to travel not only by car or by plane, but sometimes it's not possible because of the weather. And of course, uh, there is also significant uh, deficiency in uh, family physicians, so the communication between the patients, the diagnostic time, and the, the time when they are ready to go back uh, to their community sometimes can be difficult. And the fact that the lower socioeconomical status impact on increase in obesity, in smoking uh, habits and physical activity, which is decreased, creates also an increased stress as these patients require more resources. In uh, terms of uh, how the HPV and transplantation was organized, uh, we had uh, one surgical oncologist who was uh, dedicated to perform most of the surgical resection for colorectal metastasis. And then we had three HPV surgeons uh, divided into different interests, but we were able to do HPV uh, surgical oncologist uh, for HCC and cholangiocarcinoma as well as uh, we were covering for liver transplantation, pancreas and kidney transplantation. And uh, I was also able to perform ERCP, which is a unique experience uh, in consideration of the fact that it's not very common to combine all these uh, specialties, um, although it can be sometimes challenging when you are not very much supported we also had uh, surgical residents working with us, one a physician assistant, and of course uh, we had uh, the wonderful ability to create an HPB uh, fellowship which uh, was um, uh, extended for two years as well as uh, a ASTS uh, a fellowship accredited for renal transplantation. Saying all the challenges, I would like to also to mention that the fact that the system is uh, centralized uh, creates a lot of opportunities. So the centralization of referral created a large volume referral for HPB. There are just a few centers, for example, in Atlantic Canada serving this uh, group of patients. There is one in Dalhousie, which is in Halifax in Nova Scotia. Then there is a Memorial University in Newfoundland. And then there is another center in Moncton. But three centers for a very large uh, population allows you to see a lot of patients who are referred to your center. And then uh, there is a lot of excellence in epidemiological and data collection, especially for cancer patients that allows you to perform population-based studies. And of course, you know, there is a, a very high level for the academic environment and for research that does not require a lot of investment, initial investment, such as basic science research. Therefore, the opportunities that I listed here is that not only you are able to perform population-based studies because the population is local, it's not really very portable, but also allows you to collaborate with just other few centers which are located in the area and also to uh, perform a significant 
investment in education, and in training of the future generation of HPV and transplant surgeons. In conclusion, I would like to use uh, this uh, probably in a alleged you know, Nova Scotia saying that it says that it doesn't matter if uh, your glass is half full or half empty. The most important part is that there is always some room for more beer. And that means that everywhere you practice, there is always challenges, but there are a lot of opportunities that you have to discover on your own. Thank you very much for your attention.